Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is BTD and welcome back to a different type of video. Today we are going to be doing Formula 1 2017 with a different bit of a twist. I've recorded this, we're not doing it as a stream, but let's go on with this video. So here we are, we've made it to Canada. Uh, we're feeling quite strong in the Toro Rosso since the last episode. As you can see, we're beating Carlos Sainz in the rivalry. And I thought now would be the time, as we knew Canada was strong for us, to make a fuel injection system change. So, so we've done, we've upgraded it, and that hopefully it should come by the next round, which I'm not too sure when it was. Uh, yeah, so coming into qualifying, here we are, just checking everything out. I felt fairly confident after doing a couple runs in practice, getting all the uh, uh, tests that you need to do done. And, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know how I ended it there. Uh, coming into the end of our Q1 lap, we took that, cor that chicane a bit, a bit slow if you wanted to call me that but yeah i can see on my little mini map down below uh ricardo and kimmy coming a bit close to each other which i thought oh was a bit bad as you see kimmy exiting the pits now and you know he sort of blocked ricardo on his lap should he have had a penalty for that mm, to me i think he should have so coming into the end of q1 we come ninth uh carlos 11th so hopefully we're doing better So, Q2, intermediate tyres. Damn, was it a struggle. So, <laughs> this is where it gets funny. We were warming our tyres up. Before making our Q2 run, we felt a bit dodgy as we never done this track in this Toro. So, in the rain, and we smashed it into the wall with the Wall of Champions. Could we have done this better? I think so. Putting a, a tad bit of heat into those tyres and maybe breaking a bit earlier, setting ourselves up for the corner could have cost us. A lot less than we just did. So, that's it for us guys. We're out in Q2. There's nothing we could have really done. Everybody, all the champions, all future champions always crash in that. That's why it's called the World Champions. So, let's move on. So, here we are. Race time. Uh, as you can see on the little mini map, it's going to be raining and then it's going to be drying up. So, that's why they started us on the soft tyres. Which I thought, thank God, because <laughs> since we got the qualifying run in... I was not confident in the rain, especially this Toro Rosso and the track. I was, when I was doing practice sessions, it was definitely in the dry. So, yeah, here we are. On the parade lap, just checking through, making sure the car's all good. And, yeah, everything felt good. The track felt a bit slippery. That was the initial, as it was still raining at the time of the Grand Prix start. And, yeah, so what I want to try and do is get as much heat as I could into the tyres as it's going to be a very very cold start and we got a bit bored on the parade lap and started having a bit of a, a tussle with Verstappen coming down the main straight which I thought was quite funny but hey ho so here we are five red lights and away we go for the Canadian Grand Prix we get a fairly good start on Stroll which I thought was great but that was really it really everybody else sort of overtook us so I thought why not cheeky Ricardo dive bomb we clipped our front wing on Perez, which I thought we could have really avoided there. It was a bit of a sloppy uh, collision by me. And as you can see here, we actually hit Stroll again as well. Which I, I didn't actually see when I was racing this. And yeah, so we sort of like uh, coming behind Perez. We sort of tuck in. Get now, get our heads down for the rest of this Grand Prix. Where I thought to myself, we went a bit wide there. And I thought, well not, let's have a quick go. Down the inside of Perez here. And I thought, oh, could have had him there. When he, he slowed down a bit coming out of the exit, which made me have to sort of correct myself, which I thought, mm, was that really necessary from Perez there? As we thought, coming down the inside, he would have seen us in his mirrors, trying to do the undercut of Rimmel there. But no, so I thought, here we go again. Tried down the inside again. No, overcooked it, because I was, I think I was pushing a bit too hard for lap one, and I slowed down, let Perez through, and because I felt, I, I didn't get penalised for that, so I thought, let him through, and we'll go again. As Jeff has to make sure that we know that our front wing is damaged. Which, we, we don't need to know that again, Jeff. So we are on to lap 2, coming down with Prez again. We're going to make a cheeky dive bomb down the inside to turn 1. Beautiful overtake. And yeah, that is us up into P8. As a replay of us making the overtake, I thought it was a very, very easy overtake. Maybe a bit tricky in these sort of conditions, like running the ultra soft tyres in the wet weather, but hey. We got it done, we're moving up, and as you see in the background here, uh, Marcus Ericsson gets a bit confuffled up in the, the Wall of Champions, where he had to reconnect himself. 
and go from there. So, moving on to lap 3 now, we're behind Ocon. We've catched up to when Perez has fallen behind a bit. We try to make the overtake, and the tyres are just not up to temperature at the minute. As we just slid off the track straight away, and I take avoiding action, I think, from Ocon. Yeah, just slight avoiding action, but I think we carried a bit too much speed like we did in qualifying session. And I had to correct ourselves there, so, hey. Coming on to lap 4 now, we've caught right up behind him there. We've got a cheeky little warning for cutting the track, which, thankfully, we didn't get a penalty for. And we're going to try down the same move as we tried on Perez, and thankfully we actually get that one done. I thought by even my own racing that that was a bit of a cheeky overtake as we sort of clipped the side pod of Ocon, but hey, we're up to 7th, and the job is done. So, moving on to lap 5 now, and we see Ricardo, we're thinking, oh, I could have him there. I do make the same overtake as I did on Perez. They went a bit wide coming through turn 1 and 2, but we finally got the move done. Which I thought was actually a really, really good move coming from how far back we were. As you can see, dive down the inside like that, like we always do, and make the move stick. That puts us up into P4, 5, I want to say 5. But then moving on to the end of this lap, we're now making another move on Verstappen now. Which puts us, I think, up into P5 now. And we're really starting to charge now, now the track's drying up. And these Ultra Softs are really starting to come into their own game. So, moving on to lap 7 now. And I'm not really sure what's going on here. I think we had Sebastian Vettel moving up on Valtteri Bottas for the lead of this race. Which was a standard overtake. No DRS actually, by the looks of uh, Vettel's wing. Yeah, and just a standard overtake into the Wall of Champions chicane. So this is us. We can see in front the Mercedes having a really bad tussle. As you can see that they're not really uh, have any, any team orders at this start of the season. As we go to the replay of this, we can see Valtteri Bottas holding off Lewis Hamilton as he's trying to overtake him. Cool, that could have caused an incident. That's exactly what no team wants to see there. As Valtteri holds on to position, we try and make the most of that. But unfortunately, we don't make any mistakes. And on the same lap here, we got on board with Perez to see that Esteban Ocon has been retired from this Grand Prix. Maybe an engine issue, maybe... Could be anything, really. No idea, because there's no smoke coming out of it as... Here on lap 8 now, we are making our pit stop, holding up Vitell a bit, which we hoped for. But this time, I completely forgot they were having a front wing change. But Toro Rosso quite well on their front wing change. It didn't seem to take too long for us to get out there, back out there. And yeah, that puts us back out in P7 as we move on to lap 10 now. And I'm not sure what's going on here. As we see Valtteri Bottas and Ricardo having a quick tussle. Coming out of the pits for position, this is 6th and 5th position. Uh, so who came out on top here? This is what I want to see. We've got Ricardo coming down the inside like he did in qualifying with Kimi. And Rick Daniel Ricardo makes a move stick. What a beautiful overtake that was. So continuing on this lap, lap 10. As we're coming through the first sector. We go purple in the first sector. Trying to push as hard as we can to catch these two guys up. And is there anything else we have to see from there? No, nope, we're just trying our luck. Just trying to push as much as we can as Seb posts the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. Now, as these two are battling away, they hold each other up, which gives us a great run on the both of us. We move on to lap 11 now. See what we can do here. We're going to make a, we're going to make a double overtake down the inside and makes it stick. What a beautiful overtake that was me, if I could say so myself. No DRS, just full momentum. Down the inside of them both as they were fighting. Nearly clipped Ricardo's front wing. As a sister team, we should not really be doing that, but we made the new stick. And what beautiful overtake that was. So now, moving on to lap 12 now. And as we can see up front, we've got Hamilton... No, Bottas, actually, coming right up behind us. As you can just see it on the little mini-map. Bottas is trying to make a move. We go defensive down the inside. We're going to try, try and keep it. As we've got yellow flags, uh, we've got Max Verstappen in the walls of champion. Is he hit by Bottas? Was that? I think he was hit by Bottas then. Uh, Verstappen just, he might got clipped by Hamilton there. But he just made the exact same mistake that we did in qualifying. So I can't really fault him there. But hey ho, that's Max Verstappen out the race now as we've gone to lap 14. Now, Daniel Ricciardo slowing down. What is wrong with his car? Maybe it's another engine issue like they have in real life. Oh, he just slows down. What all that is then? Ah, as you can see on the rear right. Puncture for Daniel Ricciardo. This is definitely not a good day for them. For Red Bull, in fact. 
As now we're moving on to lap 15, we've got another yellow flag, what is this for? As we're coming in through the chicane, taking that, oh, nice and perfect on the apexes. As it is Daniel Ricciardo, still trying to limp around on the lap after. He's definitely lost, he's lost out of this race 100%, as now we have Fernando Alonso coming out of this Grand Prix. I think we could all definitely say that that was Alonso and his engine. Because as McLaren are McLaren, they have the worst engines in Formula 1. So that's just Fernando Alonso out. No real biggie about that. As we come through Sector 1 into Sector 2. Uh, not really sure. Ah, we've got Valtteri Bottas coming up on us at last 16 out of 18. As we're not going to go too defensive on him coming in through here. As we're going to try and stick to our line as Valtteri backs out of it right there. I think that was some very, very sensible driving from Valtteri there. He could have tried down the inside of us. But no, he stuck his ground. He stayed behind us. As did we cut him off at all? That's what I want to see. Yeah, he just goes sensible and stays behind. As we move on to a bit further down on the lap as he gets DRS coming down straight on us. Can Valtteri make this stick? As we move into rich mixture, down to standard. Through to the Wall of Champions chicane. No, he makes it stick. We give him enough room to come through. And that is Valtteri Bottas up into P4. But as a Toro Rosso, we're doing extremely well uh, for being P5. Right, it's moment, yeah, it's just a standard overtake. Quite nice, I think. Moving on to the final lap of this Grand Prix. Through this came, we can see Bottas ahead of us, but he's just not going to be close enough for us to make a move. Um, yeah, as you see, Sebastian Vettel crossed the line to win the Canadian Grand Prix. It was just a stunning drive right from the start from him. He overtook Bottas on the first couple of laps, I believe, and just made a stick. And it was just a superb drive from him. And, yeah, I'm going to be a bit biased, as you know. He's my favourite driver in Formula 1 at the minute. But, yeah, coming through the final chicane. Oh, made that a bit messy coming through there. But, hey, it's been a long race for us. A lot of things have happened. But, yeah, that's P5 for the Scuderia Toro Rosso as we crash out. So, yeah, guys, if you did enjoy this type of video and you want me to continue this, I want to finish this season at least. And if you want an another season after this, I want to leave a comment down saying that below. But, yeah, Sebastian Vettel extends his lead in the World Championship by that win. Uh, Hamilton came third, actually. So was that a 1-2 for Ferrari, I believe? Ah, well, okay. Which then give them more points for the constructors. So for them, it's been definitely a good race. But for, even for us, it's been an externally good race. I'm not even sure it's externally is the right word. But yeah, as you can see, it's uh, Sebastian Vettel, Kimi Raikkonen, and Lewis Hamilton. So, yeah. Moving on to our next track. I'm not too sure where we're going to be. But hopefully, we'll have the fuel ignition upgrade to help us out with uh, probably the tracks where we need to save as much fuel as possible so we can fight more towards the end for more points. So have a quick look at the stand, well actually the race standings, we came 5th, Carlos got into 9th uh, so actually we take some constructors points away from that and we slot in to 6th now, we've overtaken Daniel Ricciardo and Sergio Perez now in the driver standing but we're nowhere near winning this championship in this season. And yeah, guys, if you did enjoy this, leave a like, smash the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.